Hi everyone, in this week's project, we're going to be building an LED lamp from an LED backlit LCD TV. Hi everyone, so I was given this one hung low ViewSonic HDMI uh, LCD screen. Um, it used to be an old monitor until it stopped working. What ends up happening is you turn the display on, the backlight comes on for a brief second and then turns off. I have a feeling that the main chip is bad. So I've decided to turn it into another project. So what I've done here is I've opened it up and I'm going to be converting it into a bed lamp. So I'm going to be converting it to a bed lamp. And in order to do that, the input of the LEDs require about 38 volts. And so I have here, I ordered this from eBay and it just came in today. This is a boost, a DC to DC boost converter. And I'm gonna be putting 12 volts in here and I'm gonna be getting anywhere from 12.4 volts um, <clears throat> all the way up to 48 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and give 12 volts here and slowly turn the potentiometer up until the TV is at the right brightness. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set the power supply to 12 volts. There we go, and connect it up to the boost converter. All right, here we go. I'm turning the power supply on. And ta-da, it works. 12 volts in. Ooh, it's using a lot of current. Nothing's getting warm yet but it really is using a lot of current. I'm gonna need to turn the voltage down. All right, I've turned the voltage down to where the screen is just dim enough to be able to be seen. And the current on the power supply is reading about 150 uh, milliamps. So I'm gonna turn up the voltage on here until I've achieved the desired screen brightness. And we'll see what the current draw is to make sure it's within the uh, maximums of the boost converter. So it looks like that's as bright as I can get it with this power supply. <clears throat> as you can see, this power supply goes up to 1.5 amps, and after that it has internal current limiting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out the power supply for a um, mini ATX power supply, which can supply something like six amps at 12 volts, and um, I'm gonna reconnect it and see if I can get that to work. Okay, so before the LCD screen was using about 45 volts, and it was running on about 500 milliamps. So that comes out to about 22 and a half watts. Now 22 and a half watts at 12 volts is gonna be about uh, a little over two amps. So this power supply right here is only able to source one and a half amps. It seems like I'm gonna have to get a beefier power supply if I wanna run this. All right, look what I have set up. So I have the screen working right now, it's on, and it's connected with its original power supply, which is 19 volt to 3.42 amps. And that power supply is connected to the input of the DC to DC converter. That converter is stepping up the voltage to enough voltage to forward bias the LEDs and turn them on. The large capacitor here is simply to hold the cord so it doesn't slip and pull everything off. Now, this um, DC to DC boost converter has two main components on it. It's got a controller chip, which deals with the um, PWMing, frequency control, and all of the logic of the system. And we've got a very large inductor, 330 microhenries, written on top. And that inductor right there gets really, really hot. Now, I've already run the system working um, for a couple hours and everything was good, um, nothing overheats, nothing burns out, but just to be on the safe side, I have this small aluminum heat sink right here, which I'm going to super glue to the top of the um, inductor on the DC to DC converter, just so that it's not running too, too hot.
All right, so I went ahead and turned it back on um, just to show you the current draw. So if you look right here, it's drawing 372, 73 milliamps. Okay, so as the LEDs heat up, the thermal coefficient rises in the entire system, and that's just the temperature of the boost converter, the temperature of the LEDs. As the whole overall temperature in the system rises, the amount of current that is drawn through the system also rises. That's why a lot of times you use a constant current power supply, which forces the uh, certain amount of current through the system at all times. Now, I'm not using a constant current power supply, but what I have is I have this the trim potentiometer, which is right here, not sure if you can see it, um, but I have that set to, at full temperature, at the hottest that it gets, um, it draws 450 milliamps um, through the whole system. The suggested amount of current that you should run through each pin is 112 milliamps per pin, and there's four pins. One pin goes to the top bar of LEDs, one pin goes to the side, one goes to the other side, and one to the bottom. Um, when you combine all four pins together, you have a total of about 448 um, milliamps that you're supposed to be drawing. And at maximum temperature, um, the system only draws 450 milliamps. So we're well within um, safety tolerance. Almost forgot one crucial detail. The screen is coming off. The uh, LCD panel that is between the backlight and what we see has got to go. Here comes the first test of the light with the uh, LCD screen taken off. In three, two, one. Wow. It's really, really bright. So I've removed the LCD screen from the panel and I've hooked up a wire that will allow it to hang on the wall to the top frame. And I've completed the connection between the power cord and the LCD screen. I've also finished the power supply. If you see here, the um, DC to DC converter has been hot glued and zip tied to the top of the power supply. Um, the aluminum heat sink has been glued on just to help it cool down a bit. And all we have left to do is plug it in. Power will come from the wall plug, go into the AC to DC converter, and that will step the 120 volts AC down to 19 volts DC. That 19 volts DC will be stepped up to about 37 and a half volts DC. That 37 and a half volts DC travels down this wire until it gets to this point, where it comes off this wire right here and goes to this connection right here. When I connect these two wires, the light will turn on. And we have light. And when I disconnect the wires, light goes away. Ta-da! This is what it looks like when it's fully installed. This was a really fun project to build. This build was originally inspired by DIY Perks, who made a fake window light from a computer screen. The link to his channel will be in the description down below. One part I didn't cover, however, was my attempt to use the onboard circuitry of the screen to power the LED banks. This screen was very different and had a complicated brightness control system that made it all but impossible to use the onboard DC to DC converter. However, the one I purchased from eBay was all of $2.81, so it was really no big deal to replace it. The link to that will also be in the description. Hope you enjoyed this project! Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.